The word son of God, same as son of man, does not mean less than. It's putting of equal nature to. For instance, if I said we're, we're son of man, it doesn't mean we're sub subcontract bunch, you know. It doesn't mean that you're less than a man. It means you're of the equal nature too. Your third uh, question was, was he three gods? No. The scriptures, as the Christian understands them, teaches God in a plurality of persons, but in unity. The Old Testament says, let us make man in our own image. The Elohim is a plural word. Uh, Ichad is a plural word, which means there is the Lord our God is one. It means the Lord our God is unity. I was a member of a family where we had three in a family, but it wasn't three families. We were one family. Now that may give you just a brief understanding. Thank you. Do you have a question for uh, Sheikh Didat? No. Okay, do you have a question for Sheikh Didat? Can you come forward? To Mr. Didat. Is there anywhere in the Bible mentioned that Christ was God, the God of Moses, of David, Noah, Abraham, and Adam, and that he was the creator of this universe and creation? No, there is no such thing. Also with regards to the Trinity. See, the Christian says that God is in three persons. And they say in the formula that the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Ghost is God but they are not three gods but one God. They continue in the catechism, in the book of instructions, that the Father is almighty, the Son is almighty, and the Holy Ghost is almighty, but they are not three almighties but one almighty. It continues that the Father is a person, the Son is a person, and the Holy Ghost is a person, but they are not three persons but one person. Am I correct? I don't know the book of catechism. I am asking the Christian, the Westerner, who speaks English, you said person, 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 but not three person, but one person. I said, I want to know what language are you talking? Is that English? I'm asking, is that English? That's gibberish. Person, 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 but not three person, but one person. And Bishop Wakefield, in his book, in his book, it just happens to be here, he, he's written about the doctrine of the Trinity, the attributes of God, Trinity, the triune God. And at the end of his essay on the Trinity, Bishop says, he says, yet there are not three gods, but only one, one God only, as seen in the previous section. Therefore, therefore, we conclude that there are three persons in the unity of the Godhead. And the support is 1 John 5 7. 1 uh, John yes. 5 7. One second, it. one second. <laughs> 1 John 5 7. What I'm asking is that 1 John 5 7 is not in my Bible. I want you to find that for me in this Bible of mine. It, uh, there have been several omissions in some of the modern versions. I don't agree with them, so that's where I stand. So I'm asking, yeah. who omitted that? That verse is thrown out as a fabrication in the RSV, Revised Standard Version. Yes, I understand. Who, who did this Revised Standard Version? Not Jews, not Hindus, not Muslims, but 32 scholars of the highest eminence, Christian scholars of the highest eminence, Thirty-two scholars of the highest eminence, backed by fifty cooperating denominations of Christianity, they threw it out as a fabrication, and the whole Christian world is come sucking a fabrication and creating a new Godhead, a three-in-one. This is the Bible. Thank you. I um, I happen to disagree with those scholars because scholars can be mistaken. And sometimes, sometimes in the defense of truth, of course, my whole truth wasn't hung on that one verse. I just used that one end there. 
Better do that. That was written 47 years ago, by the way. <laughs> but I, I'm glad he refers to it. He's giving you a lot of good scriptures tonight. That's terrific. Uh, now, that one verse is not the only one I've used. But I will say this, and I say this respectfully, that because a man claims to be a Christian scholar or become from a mainline Christian denomination does not mean that he is a committed Christian any more than a person who says, well, I'm Islam and doesn't practice it. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in view of the fact that tomorrow Sheikh Ahmad Didat will be debating in the Civic Auditorium in Ottawa, we will have to entertain only four more questions tonight. So we shall take one from each of the microphones, one directed to each of the speakers alternately, and four more questions only allowed. We'll start with the upper microphone. Microphone number one. Mr. Didat, we have covered a lot of ground where there are things in common with Christianity and Islam. My question is, surely the veracity of Jesus Christ as a prophet is what we are discussing. And if in fact he said that he was God, if in fact he forgave sin, if in fact he guaranteed that he would die, rise again for the atonement of the world, then either we have to accept that he was indeed a prophet, and the Old Testament, as you know, says that to test a prophet is that his word is altogether true, or he was deluded, or he was a liar. My question to you, sir, is, was Jesus a prophet, and did he speak the truth? <laughs> Jesus Christ, not only a prophet, but he's one of the mightiest messengers of God in Islam. And what he spoke, he spoke the truth. But people have a tendency of seeing, reading into scripture what is not there. I'm telling you, repeated the phrase, Jesus claiming to be God. I'm telling you, here the Bible is here. If you haven't got one, come down. And by the, other, by the time the other questions are being asked, you find that verse for me, and I will give you my hand and take me to be baptized. Come, come down here and show me in your Bible. Question for Bishop Wakefield on microphone two. Mr. Wakefield, I have a question. If I paint a big, big picture in which I draw Jesus Christ, the Lord, and he's crucified on the cross with the thrones on his head, what do you think the title of this picture would be? Do you think it's love or wisdom? Thank you. I'm sorry I would not do go for drawing a picture. I must speak reverently. I do not be making graven image or any likeness to either worship or to any creature here on earth to worship by. You understand? Do you have a question for Sheikh Dida? As you can see, I'm a Muslim. And by, I also have an open mind. I, I read the Bible and uh, many Bibles, as a matter of fact. So the question is, I read one time a Bible which was from Greece, and half of the Bible was talking about Greek people. Now, if the Bible is Word of God, does, does the Word of God only talk about, uh, in a half of the Bible, about Greek people? That I could not believe. So could you answer that, please? This problem, not Maybe I think you have mistaken the Jews for Greeks. Because <laughs> again and again, Jesus Christ speaks to his people, telling them, I'm not sent but under the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He's telling his disciples, Go ye not into the way of the Gentiles, meaning the non Jews, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. But go ye rather unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel, the Jews, the Jews, the Jews. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, woe unto you, hypocrites. 
This is, I'm quoting Matthew chapter 23. Right. Woe unto you hypocrites, you generation of vipers, you brood of snakes. Woe unto you hypocrites. Six times in one chapter. Six times. This is his addressing the Jews, the Jews, the Jews, and to my knowledge, not the Greeks. But now, I was just reminded that this book here, I have written this book called The Choice. The Choice Between Islam and Christianity. And this book is available outside. This will give you information on what the Bible says about Muhammad, Muhammad the natural successor to Christ, Muhammad the greatest, and Al-Quran the miracle of miracles. This one also, a hardcover book, gold embossed, South African gold. <laughs> and it's being sold for $15. Uh, those of you who can afford it, buy one, buy two, give it to your friends, non-Muslim friends, your employers, your employees, and it'll be a better gift than giving them 15 rand, you know, for Christmas box. Give this book. The final question, microphone number four for Bishop Wakefield. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, the question directed to the bishop. Uh, Mr. Didad, has proven to us step by step with clear, dif uh, with clear evidence that Jesus was not crucified. So how do you have to explain with the statement of Paul when he said in the first Corinthians 15, 14,